hello everyone let's move on to the next lecture of thermodynamics lecture number 10 and the subtopic is proof against heat for being a path dependent function in this regard we have to start from the mathematical form of the first law of thermodynamics which is dq equals to du plus p dp now this is equation number one now u is a state function so it should be the function of states of matter pressure volume and temperature and you can select any two of them here we have selected temperature and volume and u is a function of temperature and volume if it is so then du has the expression you know that del u del dv dt plus del u del v t dv this is equation number two now here in equation number one here is du and in the left hand side of equation number two here is du so the entire right hand side of equation number two can be uh, can substitute this du here in equation number one so let us put these two quantities here in place of du and thus we get equation number three so this is the equation uh, which we have to process uh, for uh, dq uh, process in in such a way that dq has to be operated twice first temperature constant volume uh, is the variable next time volume constant temperature is the variable so let's see how we are doing that first we have made temperature constant okay if temperature is constant then have a look on equation number three this is highlighted in blue color so temperature constant that means this part would vanish these two parts would remain and here dv is easily taken to be constant and this dv if taken to the left hand side then it will go to the new denominator of dq okay so and as, as a result it will be a partial differentiation because temperature has been made constant so it would become finally del q by del v t isn't it so here in this uh, reduced form of equation number three we are writing directly del q del v t and uh, after having taken dv uh, common the left the parts which are left here are del u del v t plus p okay so we have differentiated uh, we are having del v in the denominator so it's very easy to assume that next time we have to differentiate this with respect to temperature keeping the volume constant so this thing we are doing here differentiating both sides with respect to temperature at constant volume thus we get the here del 2 q by del t del v isn't it the final differentiation is with respect to temperature so this is taking place in the left hand side here in this uh, in this portion also del t is also placed in the left hand side okay so del 2q by del t del v and here first double differentiate this one so del 2u by del t del v okay and p will be singly differentiated with respect to fall uh, with respect to temperature at constant volume so the result is del p del t v thus we get equation number four so the operation is first temperature constant then volume constant so next time we have to reverse this order first volume constant then temperature constant so if volume is kept constant then let's move on to equation number three again this part would vanish this part would also vanish and this dt would go to the denominator in the left hand side and uh, here volume would be written as constant so actually what should it be it should be del cube del t v and in the right hand side del u del t v isn't it so here is del q del t v and del u del t v so here del t in the numerator so very uh, easy to say that we have to differentiate this next time with respect to volume by keeping temperature constant thus we get del q del to q del v del t equals to del to u del v del t thus we get equation number five and dq is path q is path dependent or state function if q is a path dependent function then dq is not a perfect differential and if q is a state function then dq is a perfect differential isn't it if dq is a perfect differential then the left hand side of equation four and five should be equal so the left hand side of equation 4 and 5 is del 2q del t del v equals to del 2q del v del t okay these are the left hand sides if the left hand sides are equal for assuming uh, for q to be perfect uh, dq to be perfect differential then the right hand sides 
should also have to be equal isn't it so the right hand side of equation 4 is this one and the right hand side of equation uh, uh, sorry this is the right hand side of equation 5 and the right hand side of equation 4 is this one okay and since u is a state function then this parameter and this parameter are same del to u del v del t must be equal to del to u del t del v because u is a state function so definitely this part should be zero isn't it so if this part is zero del p del t v then it is possible that dq is a perfect differential isn't it but is that possible if you keep the volume constant and increasing the increasing the temperature then would pressure remain constant or change it is very easy to say that pressure would increase that means pressure and temperature are directly proportional to each other if volume is kept constant and this is law of Gay-Lussac so according to the Gay-Lussac's law del P del T V is not equal to zero that means the left hand sides of equation 4 and 5 are not equal so del to Q del T del V is not equal to del to Q del V del T that means the Q is not at all a perfect differential and conversely Q is a path dependent function so we have so far proved that W is a path function U is a state function and Q is a path function okay so that's all for today's lecture thank you have a nice day